Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Configuring User Correction on the SMA100B. In this short presentation, we'll explain what user correction is and how to perform user correction on the Rodian Schwartz SMA100B using an NRP series power sensor. If you're not familiar with how NRP power sensors are connected and mapped on the SMA100B, we recommend that you watch the presentation using NRP sensors with the SMA100B before continuing with this presentation. To understand user correction, we need to start by explaining something called frequency response. Almost all active and passive devices found in RF have so-called frequency response. That is, they affect signals differently at different frequencies. Even a simple RF cable will attenuate signals by different amounts depending on the frequency of the signal. For example, Times LMR400 cable is advertised as a low-loss cable, but its attenuation per 100 meters goes from a very modest 3 dB at 50 MHz to over 30 dB at 5 GHz. The same behavior can be found in many other common components, like connectors, couplers, attenuators, etc. Often we want to deliver a given level of signal power to a device under test, and do this over a certain frequency range. For situations where there is a relatively flat frequency response along the signal path, we can simply increase the generator output power by a fixed amount to compensate for this frequency-dependent loss. But what if we have a significant frequency response? What power level do we set on our generator for a given frequency? We could try to calculate and set this manually, but the more accurate and the more efficient way of compensating for this external frequency response is using something called user correction. User correction is implemented by using a table that maps frequency to a correction value. The generator looks in the table and changes its output power by the amount indicated for the current frequency. This allows the generator to provide a consistent power level to the device under test over a wide frequency range. The most common way that user correction is implemented is by using a signal generator and a power sensor to measure the frequency response of the signal path and then use those values to create a correction table. This presentation will show how user correction tables are built and applied using an SMA100B analog signal generator and an NRP series RF power sensor. The first step is creating the user correction data. We're going to assume that at least one NRP power sensor is connected, mapped, and ready for operation. We'll start by creating a new user data correction file by first clicking on Level in the main SMA100B GUI and then selecting User Correction. The first step in creating user correction data is creating a new empty user correction data file. Click on UCore data and choose path and file name for the user correction data file. After creating the file, highlight and select it before returning to the user correction menu. After we've selected the newly created empty file, choose edit UCore data. We'll be using a sensor to automatically fill in this data file, but first we need to edit the file. The reason we have to edit this file is that we need to specify the frequency steps or the measurement points for the user correction. The easiest way to do this is using the fill function. Using the fill function, we enter a start frequency, here 700 MHz, an increment step, here 100 kHz, and the number of steps or range, 1001 in this case. Note that the end value is automatically calculated based on these values. We then click on fill and exit this dialog. Our previously empty user correction file should now be filled with data points in the frequency per hertz column. We see steps every 100 kilohertz as we configured in the previous step. The correction value per dB column is, however, still filled with all zero values. The next step, therefore, is to fill these values with data from the sensor, so we choose Fill with Sensor. To fill the user correction file from a sensor, we first choose the sensor we want to use and whether or not we want the sensor zeroed before calculating the corrections. After pressing Execute, the data collection process begins and usually takes several minutes, depending on the number of steps. When the process is completed, we can return to the main user correction screen. Prior to filling the sensor with data, we had all zeros in the correction value per dB column, but after running Fill from Sensor, we see the measured values inserted into the table. If necessary, we can click on any one of these values and manually update or edit it. Applying user correction data is very simple. Just select a user correction data file and then switch user correction on. 
Note that when a user correction file is active, this is shown in the level block of the SMA main GUI. Now let's take a few moments and look at the effects of our user correction data file. With user correction turned off, we see approximately 7.18 dB of uncorrected loss between the generator output and our power sensor. After enabling user correction, we see only 0.04 dB of loss between the generator output and the power sensor. Looking at our correction data, we see a correction value of 7.14 dB at a frequency of 750 MHz. Before we wrap up, a couple of quick observations about using correction data. First, remember that correction data is only used when the generator frequency is within the range of activated correction values. If our correction table covers 700 to 800 MHz and our generator is operating at 1 GHz, no user correction is possible. Secondly, note that generator displayed output power does not change even when user correction is enabled and active. Here, we are within the frequency range covered by the correction values and user correction is enabled. The SMA shows our generator output power as 0 dBm, but a directly connected power sensor shows that the actual SMA100B power output is plus 742 dBm. Let's summarize what we've learned. User correction is a way that we can compensate for external frequency response, such as losses caused by cables, connectors, etc., by changing the output power based on the current generator frequency. This compensation is done using a user correction table, containing frequency values and the corresponding power corrections or offsets. Although these tables can be created manually, they're most often automatically populated using a power sensor connected to the SMA. It's important to keep in mind that user correction values will only be applied if the current generator frequency falls within the range of values in the table. And lastly, even though user correction values will change the generator output power level, the indicated or displayed output power in the SMA GUI does not change when user correction is activated. If you'd like to learn more about user correction, signal generators, power sensors, and related topics, please see the links in the video description. This concludes our presentation, Configuring User Correction on the SMA100B. Thanks for watching.